Hello bookworms! Today I'm going to be sharing my February book haul. As I mentioned in my January book haul, I am going to be talking about my yearly goal of only purchasing 10 books at the beginning of every book haul video because I need to hold myself accountable. So I did purchase a total of 10 books this month and I did read over 10 books. So my physical TBR has not increased at all. So my TBR, my physical TBR has actually decreased because I have already read a couple of the books that I'm hauling. So nothing added there, which is pretty nice. I'm going to start with some of the new releases that I picked up this month, and I'm also going to show you a mix of things that were sent to me by publishers, which I don't count toward my purchasing haul. I'm going to start by showing you some new releases. I also have some backlist books, and I also have some books that were gifted to me by the publisher, and I will point all of those out when I get up to them. So let's just get into things. So first and tied for most exciting of this haul is I was gifted an arc of Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare and this actually kind of derailed my reading a little bit in February. I ended up picking this up pretty immediately after receiving it because I like how could I not? It's one of my favorite series and this just completely cemented that The Last Hours is my favorite Shadowhunter series more like even more so than The Infernal Devices which was always previously my favorite. This was just like perfection. We were following the generation of Shadowhunters that comes right after the Shadowhunters in The Infernal Devices. I don't want to be spoilery and say anything though I do think that a lot of people tend to know what the series is about but I just love it. It was so good and it was such an amazing surprise to open this. I was freaking out. Like I think I actually screamed. But as I said, I did already read it so I will talk about it more in my wrap up even though I did just give you some feelings about it there. And then the book that Chain of Iron is tied with for most exciting is obviously A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. This is the fourth book in the Akatar series. It is starting a completely new story arc and from what I understand these are actually standalones. So there will be an overarching like interconnected story but you will get like resolution at the end of each one. I think it's more of like a companion series, so each book is going to follow a different character or set of characters, though the other characters that you're familiar with will also like be in there too. So this is the Nesta book, and I opted to get the Barnes & Noble edition because it has a short story about Resand and Feyre, and Alexa opted to get the Books a Million edition because that one had a short story about Azrael. So we decided to each get a different version and then share the story with each other so that we didn't have to both buy two books. And especially when we don't even like the covers. I'm starting it as soon as I finish filming these videos and I am very excited to do so. Then I was really pleasantly surprised when the publisher Random House sent me a free copy of Victory's Price, which is the third book in the Alphabet Squadron series by Alexander Freed. This is a Star Wars series and I believe it's a trilogy, so this should be the final book that like wraps up everything. We are following a squadron of different characters that all pilot different ships and it's a very unusual squadron because all of the ships are different within the squadron from what I understand. I have not actually read the first one yet. I do have it have the audiobook on hold because I do like the Star Wars audiobooks. They have a lot of like music and they tend to have full cast and they're honestly just the production is very well done. So I think I'm going to listen to these on audio but I do like having the option of following along in the physical book too. I am so thankful to Random House for sending me this. Then also new this month and this was a pre-order for me is the third volume of Chobits by Clamp. They've been re-releasing these in these beautiful hardcover editions. They're all like this very pretty blue cover and they have some color pages in them. We've got Chi on the cover here. The spines are honestly just beautiful and I'm so glad to have like really nice editions of Chobits for my manga shelves. I love that I've been able to like grade so many of my favorite series lately. Chobits is actually one of the first-ish manga that I read. I, Sailor Moon was probably the first manga that I read but Chobits was the second manga that I read so I have very like nostalgic feelings for it and I'm very excited to 
be getting these editions. And then the last new release that I purchased this month is Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. This is Melissa's newest book. She wrote the book The Pisces, which I have not actually read, but the synopsis of this one sounded very appealing to me. It follows a character named Rachel who is Jewish and she grew up with a mother that got her into this like culture of calorie counting and just being completely obsessive about her weight and about making sure that she's not like intaking too many calories and exercising in case she does eat more and like all of that kind of stuff. So she, it's just kind of like her way of life. But then when she starts going to therapy, her therapist encourages her to take a 90 day detox from her mother and from all of the weight loss stuff. And during that time, she ends up meeting another woman who works at a yogurt shop, a frozen yogurt shop. Rachel and Miriam end up forming a close friendship. Miriam is the woman that works at the frozen yogurt shop and Miriam is constantly trying to feed Rachel. The synopsis also says that the story just explores the different types of appetites when it comes to physical hunger or spiritual longing or even sexual desires, but I'm really excited to read it. It sounds really good. Then I was also sent a copy of Muted by Tammy Charles. This is a book that was not on my radar at all, but when it came in the mail, I was very intrigued because I have to say this is probably one of the most beautiful hardcovers that I've ever seen. So if you take this dust jacket off, there's also like hot pink end papers, but look at that the plane and the clouds. Like, it, this is just a thing of beauty. I am obsessed with it. And this is a story that's told in verse. It follows a 17-year-old named Denver who is doing everything that she can to try to escape her very white hometown. And she feels like she's finally getting her big break when she meets this guy named Merck and he introduces her to this whole other world that she just was never used to. And there's a lot of partying and drugs and things that she probably shouldn't be getting into. And it comes to the point where she has to decide whether it's more important that she keeps hanging on and has this big break or if she does what's best for her as a person and it sounds like it's going to be very powerful. Past Kristen had never really been interested in books in verse but two of the books that I loved most that I read last year were both in verse so I'm definitely open to reading more books in verse. I am excited that this showed up because I think that this sounds like it could be really good. And then last like kind of new release that I got is the publisher Simon & Schuster sent me a copy of the movie tie-in edition of Always and Forever Lara Jean. I obviously love these books. I've read this one already. This is actually my favorite book in the series and the movie was so good. I loved it. I think these are so cute. These are the best movie tie-in editions of anything that I've ever seen. I normally do not like movie tie-ins but I think these are just so beautiful and I think it's also partially just because I love the movies so much that the tie-in like doesn't bother me at all and I actually look forward to seeing what they're gonna look like. Then moving on to the backlist books that I purchased this month. First I have The Lady Upstairs by Hallie Sutton. This is a thriller novel. It's actually quite short. I was surprised at how small it was when I received it. There seems to be some kind of trend going on in thrillers with women being upstairs. <laughs> I read The Wife Upstairs in January. I know my mom read another book recently where there was a woman upstairs and now I've got this one. So <laughs> this one follows a woman named Jo and her job is to blackmail bad men. She lives in Los Angeles so a lot of the men she's blackmailing tend to be people in Hollywood whether they're actors or producers though she also does blackmail corrupt cops. And she's both motivated by the money that she makes from doing this as well as the opportunity to take power away from some of these awful men and give it back to the women in the city. And Jo is determined to impress her boss who is the lady upstairs that she really doesn't know anything about. So she keeps taking on riskier and riskier jobs and then one of her targets ends up murdered. So in order to kind of cover up her failure at that last job, she decides to take on one more operation, but it's an extremely risky one and she's doing it behind the back of the lady upstairs. And I don't really know what's gonna happen from there, but it sounds like it's gonna be pretty interesting. Then I have another kind of thrillery novel and that is The Asawa Murders by Rika. Anda. This one won the Mystery Writers of Japan Award for Fiction, so that initially drew me to it. I, this was listed as one of the New York Times most notable books of the year. When I saw the cover and I was like, that actually looks pretty good and I tend to like mystery, so let me look into this. It was actually a little bit tough to get. It seemed to be out of stock in most places, but thankfully I was able to get a copy from The Strand. I ordered it online from them in New York City. Or no, was The Strand out? No, you know what? The Strand was out. I got it. I ordered it from Barnes & Noble. 
So just kidding. This book takes place in the 1970s and it's following a family named the Awasama family and they host a birthday party in their villa on the Sea of Japan. But during that party, there are actually 17 people that die because their drinks get poisoned with cyanide. There are almost no clues to what's going on except that the killer did leave behind a note in verse and the only person who was spared is the daughter who is blind. And then the police come up with a prime suspect for the case, but that person ends up committing suicide like shortly after being suspected. So that pretty much seals everybody's thought that that was the guilty person. But then a future detective and a mystery author within the village both have the feeling that the daughter Hisako was somehow involved in the crime. So they team up together and the truth ends up being revealed about exactly what happened and exactly what the motive was behind the killer's intentions during this like crazy birthday party gone wrong. It sounds like it's going to be pretty thrilling and I'm really excited to read it. Then a nonfiction book that I picked up this month is Working on a Song by Anais Mitchell, who is the creator and writer of Hades Town, which is a Broadway show that I am obsessed with. It's so good. So I actually listened to this book on audio and I loved it. It just explained so much about the making of Hades Town and some of the changes that were made in the script from the years that it was released as a recording to when it was a full-blown Broadway play. This made me cry like several times <laughs> and it tells you lyrics and then Anais actually annotates them so she'll give you a story behind the lyrics or the intention or just like an anecdote about writing them and it was ugh, so excellent that I had to pick up a physical copy. The physical copy also does include some color photos from the Broadway play. If you like Broadway or Greek mythology, I highly recommend seeing Hades Town once that's an option again, but also listening to the soundtrack because the entire play is, a, it's like a full-blown musical, so everything is conveyed in song. There isn't any dialogue that you'll miss by listening to the soundtrack versus seeing it in person. Obviously the visuals do add a lot because it was like excellently choreographed and just like the stage direction was amazing, but it's still just worth listening to the song. So if you like Hades and Persephone, I definitely recommend this. Then I got three more backlist books. These are the last one. Oh no, I got four. The last, like the 10th book that I purchased this month hasn't actually arrived yet. It should be here today, but it hasn't arrived yet. So I decided that instead of waiting and including it in next month, I would just put an image in and tell you guys about it now because I don't want to make it seem like I purchased more than 10 books next month. And that book is The Last Story of Mina Lee by Nancy Junyoon Kim. This was actually one of Reese Witherspoon's book club picks and I never picked it up, but I obviously did now because it sounds really interesting. It follows a character named Margot whose mother stops answering her phone calls so she gets really worried and she ends up going to LA and finding out that her mother actually passed away and it seems like there are kind of mysterious circumstances surrounding her death. So Margot moves into her apartment, she gets a job at like a local Korean grocery store and she ends up uncovering all of these things about her mother's past and, and just learns so much more about her mother and her mother's experience and I believe it also ties into the real reason why her mother passed away but it just helps this daughter have a better understanding of her mom and it sounds like it's gonna be really good. Then I picked up The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali. So funny story about this book. I actually went to the Strand book event last year. It was one of the last book events that I got to go to before everything happened and we went into lockdown. The author was so well-spoken and I've been meaning to pick up her book ever since then. My friend Rachel actually read it and absolutely loved it so that's why we went to the book event. Me, her, and Alexa went together. It was also like completely different than any other book event that I had gone to. I really thoroughly enjoyed it but this story sounds really beautiful. It follows Roya who is a teenager living in like the political upheaval in 1953 Tehran. In 1953 Tehran. And Roya finds like a sanctuary in this local stationery shop and she just like loves books and everything and she writes poetry herself. And then the shopkeeper ends up introducing her to his other favorite customer, Bauman. He has a burning passion for justice and for poetry and when the two of them meet, sparks start flying, they end up having a budding romance. And then on the eve of their marriage, they decide to meet one another in this town square, but violence erupts there. And while Roya waited, Bauman never showed up. So she is 
trying to contact him, wondering what happened, and is kind of forced to just move on because she can't get in touch with him, and she ends up moving to California, and then I believe 60 years later, yeah, she has the opportunity to reconnect with him and to ask him those burning questions about where he was, why he didn't show up, and what exactly happened all of those years prior. And Rachel loved it. It was one of her favorite books the year that she read it, so I feel like I'm going to enjoy it as well. And then also on the historical side, I picked up Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. This tells the story of of Betty Carpenter who was born in the 1950s. Her mother is a white woman and her father is Cherokee and she is the sixth out of eight siblings. The family lives in poverty in a rural town in Ohio but Betty really falls in love with the whole landscape of the area and I don't know exactly what happens but I know that secrets from her family's past start surfacing and Betty just continues to prove what a resilient character she is. So I believe this is a very character driven novel and it sounds like something that I will enjoy. I've seen this one on a lot of best of 2020 lists and it really piqued my interest. It's actually quite long. I thought that it was going to be much shorter but I'm really looking forward to reading it. And then the final book that I purchased is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. This follows a character named Casey Peabody in the summer of 1997 in Massachusetts. I believe her mother has suddenly passed away and she's also been facing repercussions from a recent love affair. And Casey is a 31 year old that is still extremely determined to live a creative life. She ends up meeting two very different men and it kind of fractures her world even more, continues to challenge whether living a creative life is possible and feasible for her when she's still like dealing with all of these debt collectors and everything like that. It sounds like it's going to be an interesting examination of her path of life and I'm quite excited to read it. I hate <laughs> stickers. I feel like every single book that I get recently has a sticker on it and I'm like, why? Like, no one wants this. But anyway, those are all of the books that I acquired in February. I purchased 10 of them myself and the rest of them were sent to me by publishers. So thank you again to the publishers who sent me things. I'm very pleased with this haul. I feel like it was a good haul. Let me know what books you picked up in February or if you read anything that I may have mentioned, especially some of the titles that maybe aren't talked about too much on booktube. I feel like I got a good mix of things that I haven't really heard anyone talk about. So I'm excited to like dive in without having too many preconceived notions about what to expect or the quality of the book. <laughs> yeah, so that's all that I have for this video and I will see you guys soon in a new one. Bye!